Hello everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Welcome to the live drive of the 2021 Cadillac Escalade. We're here with Alyssa. Unfortunately, Nathan was not able to join us for this live drive. And this is a little opportunity for us to share something like this, something cool, something exciting, something that we're passionate about with all of you in Interact Live. So if you've never seen a live drive before, thank you all for tuning in. If you're watching this after the fact, then be sure to subscribe to Daily Motor and check out our channel for live drive announcements. We typically, on a usual week, do them Tuesdays about four o'clock. Days are getting a little bit longer now, later into the season, so we'll try to push that time back a little bit. But uh, yeah, for now, we're a little bit early, so just a little sneak peek of taking a look at the Escalade and talking about it, because there is a lot to talk about. So, everyone say hi to Alyssa. We've got hats and gloves, and we're ready to spend all sorts of time checking out this big flagship beast from Cadillac. And hit us up in the comments. Let us know if you're here. We'll be keeping an eye on them periodically. Looks like we already got the Pittsburgh man, Moran, Yas. Hello, guys. <laughs> Pittsburgh man said, I bet Alyssa can fit in the trunk sideways. I think Alyssa yeah, can fit in the trunk just about every way in this car. It's actually, that should pretty be one large. Of our tests that we should be the Alyssa the test? Just yeah. lift you in like yeah. a like the a board. The Charlie test is: is this campable? Yes. And then the Alyssa test is: could I die in it? <laughs> <laughs> Sahid Ali says hello. hello. Hello there. So yeah, we're just gonna kind of get started a little bit early, and anyone who is is a little behind the fact, the uh, you know behind the game can can come on in. Let us know if we ever have any sort of audio issues or or video or anything like that. We are using the 4G LTE from OnStar in the Cadillac that worked really well last week with the Cadillac or with the Corvette. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, so we're gonna keep rocking that way. Yeah. Liz, I'll give you this a little for now. Nifty thing. Yeah, and let's just jump right on into it. I'm gonna say right off the bat. I'm not a fan of this color scheme. Ah. Alyssa and I were talking about it a little, a little bit oh, on the way yeah. over here. I I think overall the Escalade looks okay. I actually liked the previous generation and the second gen better. I think this one looks too much like the X-T6. And I'm also not a fan of this sport package that gives it the black painted wheels, and the black grille. These, which are chrome, and some of the other ones are black. But... I don't mind the white paint, I just don't think it looks good up against the black. Have you made a decision yet on how you feel? Because it is personal preference. I do understand what <clears> you're <throat> saying about the the contrast is so stark, but I really like clean lines, I really love minimalism, and I like what they've done here. It's almost as if the black is so deep and dark, it, it's almost, it creates like a negative effect, and then you have this stark transition to the white, which is it just pops it out and says, I am white, I'm a big Escalade Cadillac, look at me. And I kind of like that. Um, well, I just, I'm I, glad somebody likes it. <laughs> <laughs> or else whoever built it should be fired. Look at, look at the hood. This is, the grill is, is really extreme. But isn't that kind of <laughs> like the Escalade look? It's just a big Yeah, grill. big gaudy, you know, grill, it's everything like going thing. on. Even this badge is quite large. I mean, yeah. that's my hand. Yeah. Uh, Alyssa's five foot one, and you can see it, we do have the air suspension raised up right now, but she's. I feel so small right now. <laughs> I feel so small normally, but like next to the like, I would not be able to get into this at all. Not that I would ever do that, mm -hmm. but I mean, also look at me against these these wheels. This mm -hmm. one's not. This one's turned a little bit, so it's not going to be that great of a comparison but I feel just like a very tiny person and I cannot imagine <laughs> a tiny little five foot one woman right or man I don't know driving a giant thing like this well I am curious at uh, I'm curious how much the suspension drops down okay when in their uh, air mode so you go ahead and hold that I'm gonna drop it down so we're going to Go all the way down. I think once I close the door, it'll start dropping. Oh, you can hear it. Yeah. That gets quite a bit lower, actually. Yeah, it really does. Come on, stand in the front again. Oh, okay. <laughs> So if Alyssa needed to uh, do it, do a, some spark plugs or something on this six <laughs> two, she could get into it a little easier with the layer suspension down. I just need a smaller down. step ladder. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not up to my shoulder. Right. You know, it's up in my mid arm there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I honestly think it looks better lower down like this. It looks more proportionate. 
Before it looked yeah. like it was like awkwardly jacked up. This yeah. actually looks nice. All right, cool. <laughs> So, now, yeah. how does that change the, the driving and riding experience with all that suspension load? In general, you're not going to notice too much of a difference in ride quality. If you're doing some hardcore off-roading, you'd want to have it up, a little extra clearance, not hit your, your precious front splitter yeah, down definitely. there and everything and, 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 and the middle sections. But on road, you're not going to notice too much of a difference. In uh, When you are driving around and you get up to a certain speed, it won't be up in that high mode anymore. It'll drop down to kind of a mid-level. And this is like the low like egress and, and, and getting out setting let's go ahead and pop the trunk you want to take a look at comments see if people are i want to hear i, I hope people are excited about this one because we're excited to bring it to you so i'm sure there will be a bunch to talk about we're happy to show you anything you want to see within reason anything we can <laughs> yeah you should hold the camera for this one because i'll have to like <laughs> bend my arm so the 62 420 horse it's way way back down under there pretty low center of gravity it's a great engine for this car. I've been comparing this in my mind to the bright blue Lincoln Navigator we had over the summer. And I do prefer having just a good old naturally aspirated V8 for a car like this. It's just a little more responsive. Mm -hmm. I think a better fit to the character. Unfortunately, the 6.2 doesn't sound as good as it used to. They had to retweak some exhaust things for uh, cylinder deactivation for these newer trucks as they reworked it and same with this sierra and the silverado just doesn't sound as good and that's the same here yeah. in the escalade yeah. yeah people are asking where nathan is hmm. nathan just wasn't able to make it this week he's busy he's got unfortunately other than daily motor things right. to attend to he would have loved to be here and help us review this ginormous piece of a vehicle yep yeah. he likes big american luxury so yeah. he will be a bit disappointed if he's around this weekend maybe we'll try to do a second second live drive or something like the other that. car we've got this week's a lexus rx so not nearly as exciting right right um and the Pittsburgh man says, I could never get an Escalade in anything other than black. I do think black would look yeah. so much cooler in this. Yeah, really Absolutely. Sleek. Yeah. I definitely agree. Yeah. So, did I tell you where the how to open the trunk? Yeah, should be. Does the car need to be on for that? Maybe, but there's another way. I figured it out! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Press the badge. Yeah. It's a nifty way to kind of hold it in there. And no, then that's pretty neat. And close it back down. It gives the badge another purpose other than right. being there. Yeah. And then there's a second little button up underneath here. You press that. You can open the glass. Oh. And then that's, cool. that's a way to get on up in there. You can drop things in real quick. Or as Alyssa mentioned earlier, if you had a long board or something you needed to send through your car, yeah. you could yeah. have it sticking out the back. I don't know. You could, could you fit a kayak in there? It'd be tight. A thin one. Yeah. <laughs> Thin kayak. Yeah. And then, as Doug DeMiro pointed out, you can open that and the glass just goes along with it but stops at a point. Yeah. That's kind of neat. That's good that it stops at a point because if you need to put something in your trunk or whatever and you normally park your car in like a, a garage a, or something. A garage, yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. your kid press like the button while you had it open. Trucker, or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I might, well, yeah, let's just go straight to here. Anytime you need to interrupt me with comments, you're welcome to. Okay, well, I'll do that now. Okay. Uh, Pittsburgh Man says the Navigator looked better. I agree. I yes. do. I was going to get to that, but I think both inside and outside the Navigator is it the prettier car. It was so pretty. Yeah. It was just such a beautiful periwinkle, I think we called it on the inside or something yep, like that. Yeah, it's like periwinkle and ivy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Ron says, uh, <laughs> manual mode test request. Interestingly enough, yeah. Maron, uh, I tried doing manual mode on the way here in sport mode and it, the paddle shifters weren't working. Mm -mm. I was hitting them and nothing was happening. There was no indication. So um, there must be some way I have to either enable those or maybe it has to be an L mode or something, but we will we will definitely do that. Yeah. Yep. And Nathan Dreyer ah. watching with Mr. Matelski. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Matelski. Hello, Nathan. Thanks for tuning in. Up under here, not too much space. You can put like a few straps or something like that in there if you needed to, but you do see a nice big subwoofer for the 36 speaker stereo system, which we will absolutely be doing a review on. It's gonna be a tough one for me, especially just <laughs> tracking all the speakers down, but I will put in my homework and make it happen. On the right side, very easy way to fold down the seats. Less if you wanna do it, because you actually have to hold it, unfortunately, just press down on the L and the R. Both at the same time? Sure. Is it not working? No, I hear stuff. 
That's probably the phone volume. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe it's the other way? No, it's down. Just hold them. Oh, okay. There you go. And then okay. they flop right down. And then you got a pretty flat load That's surface. That's super flat. That's so giant. This is, I know this is very similar though to the Navigator because you and I filled the back of that Navigator up with race gear. Yes. And it was about the same. So yeah. you got your captain's chairs up there and uh, pretty... It doesn't look like I'd be able to lay sideways flat. No? No. Should I try that? If you want to. I think you're right. <laughs> so, uh, I wouldn't want you to get your feet all over. Uh, no, although I did I have a, a mountain bike in here early this morning and I managed to keep it clean. So, hey, there's that plug. So you asked earlier what that button was in the center console. There's the plug that it controls. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So you can actually, you can fold the second row seats from right here, but you can't bring, you cannot bring them back up, unfortunately. So once they're there, the yep. Yeah. But you can bring the third row back up. Oh, I like that a lot. Yep. So you got that. They That's come up pretty awesome. quick too. Yeah. Hey, you have to hold oh, it. Oh, they actually stop. Like you could actually. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the goal. Okay. Yep. That's mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. I think it's the car radio that's on. I think, I think my phone right. disconnected yeah. from the uh, Android Auto. Oh. Yep. There you are. Cool. You want to hop in the back? Not real handles. That's a huge guest. Uh, it sure is. Look at that. And you can see right here, they are going to be adding a diesel model. Wow. And that's right where the def fluid is, or the, it's redundant. The diesel exhaust fluid is going to go. Yep. Oh, you got to put in 91 octane in here. That's a bummer. The 6.2. Hmm. Hmm. Not real door handles, as I was saying. There's just a little button on the back. You just press it. Open ah. it. The door's actually kind of light. Go ahead and open that. I do like that. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. Turn that down. Okay. Can okay. I hop on in? Sure. Oh, okay. yeah. So, should apparently, this, this should be easy. And then. It actually feels really weird. Like it wants to go forward as well. Ah, I do think the seat's like more forward than usual. I bet there's a bar under here. Hmm. It, it's right here. Oh, I that think. goes back and forth? I feel like it. Oh, interesting uh, place. Hmm. Okay. I don't like that. No? You want to do <laughs> second mean, row first or third row? We'll do... Oh, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Do you want to do back first? Sure. Okay. You can demonstrate how... Oh, you're going to go through the middle? How else am I going to get... Oh! One, two. That actually <laughs> is pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty... It doesn't feel exactly like confidence inspiring, but it's easy. Roomy? So far, I mean, it's gonna be, a, with these pushed all the way forward, it's gonna feel ridiculously roomy back here. So maybe we should pull them back. Is there room for a basketball player? Probably. I'll let you take the camera. Watch your feet. Oh yeah, it is weird how it kind of comes It goes up. up. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't just, yeah. So that's with that second row all the way back. And you still have knee room. I do. What about me? Now watch this chair. The whole seat <laughs> comes up. They, it moves up and forward. Yeah, because here yeah. it's down. And that's kind of neat because it makes a flat back. load floor. Yeah. But then it makes it so you're not sitting with your knees in your mouth. <laughs> now that's still way up there for me. I don't think there's a way for me to bring it back from here. But I uh, got plenty of room. Yeah. These are kind of upright though. Like I'm sitting very straight up and very down. Very straight up and yeah. Hmm. Hmm. It does. If for me, I don't mind it. It feels okay. Yeah. The only thing that's a little bit iffy for me is um, lifting that. Mm -hmm. See, the captain chair up is is really difficult for me. From back here, or just in general? Just in general. Yeah. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah. Now we do have these buttons that should. Perfect. I do like that. It makes it easy. Yeah. You got some lights back here, some air vents, which are kind of nice. Although I wonder if like, if the driver's got his air going on like two or three fan, if this is just going to be blasting you in the face, but uh, you can kind of move it around. Yeah, there aren't any controls. I mean, Probably you might be able to close it manually. It sounds like you can close it manually. But, yeah. Um, there are a lot of controls for the captain chairs, of course. I think I'm just, a, I'm a little disappointed in the seat comfort in the third row. 
I don't know. I just could I sit very upright. It's not very padded. Mm. I didn't spend a ton of time in the Navigator, but I don't remember it being like I thought. I think I remember the, just both the S the Expedition and the Navigator having a remarkably roomy third row. Gotcha. Maybe they make an L Cadillac that's long. That's got a little more third row space. Mm. Can I see the comments? Oh yeah. There's not really anything else to talk about back here either, other not, than uh, not too much, no. there's a there's USB C on each side, so that's good. Um, too bad we don't have Nathan. We could have him ride in the third row while we were uh, driving around. Ah, uh, <laughs> the Pittsburgh man says, "Wait, wait, wait! If the air suspension is all the way up, can Alyssa reach the trunk close button?" I am curious about that. We'll have to try that. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll go try back that after this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Forged Fantasy, what does this cost? $35,000? Ha, huh, that's a good one. Try <laughs> an extra 80 something yep. on top of that. Uh, this one's 112. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Pittsburgh Mag says try 100 plus. Yep, there you go. $112,000 we're in right now. Uh, Bella Dia J, I don't understand hey. why people go with the less, um, less length SUV, like Kia uh, Sorento, which doesn't have more boot space like other six people space left after six people inside i think that's for certain people um oh the car just turned off hopefully the it looks like the hot spot's still on i'll let you take this real quick though okay i think those are more for people who don't actually plan on using their third row regularly only mm. in like very occasional situations and the reason <laughs> being for example i'm just gonna start it sure <laughs> if that cuts out for a second, that's because... Yeah, it says Cadillac. reconnecting. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Make sure it reconnects. Waiting. And... Should be back into this. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Yep. Sorry about that. That was because the, uh, the hot spot... The, the car shut off. And on, I guess it only sits in on position for a few minutes. Mm. Um, yes, your stream may have been briefly interrupted. Thank you, GoPro. <laughs> also says our stream health is not very good. Oh, that's um, unfortunate. Hmm, I wonder why, because our signal should be great. Um, let's maybe move up to the second row here. Okay. Thank you. I feel like I'm emerging from a cave. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Yeah? Yeah, it's just hard. Huh. It makes sense though because captain's chairs are so giant, you know? Right. Do you want me to hold it? Uh, sure. Okay. I'll get the other side. Can we get in there? Okay. Yeah, it just it seems like the hot spot is not quite as strong maybe as the as the Corvettes. Um, mm. We're keeping an eye on the stream quality right now. It looks like it's pretty low. I don't exactly know why. So let us know what it's looking like for you guys. Um, I mean, it should be should be full strength. I don't understand why it's not. Right. So if right. Uh, if we can't get a little better consistency, we'll reconnect using uh, one of our phone hotspots. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, I think sometimes people get three row SUVs when they don't, they're not going to use the third row much. Like smaller three row SUVs. I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anything else? Forge Fantasy says soccer moms are going crazy watching this. Ha! Ah. <laughs> soccer mom dream. It's actually not. Specific as a soccer mom dream. This thing is not, I mean, like there, there haven't been any outstanding people hauler miss mm. about this for me yet. Mm. If anything, I mean, the, the cars, they made the Escalade pretty good for the driver, but everything else has been a little underwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think you were quite disappointed with this back seat here. I'm not super impressed by these second row seats either. They um, look... Um, they look cool. They look very cool. I like the, the leather stitching in them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the color and, and the color of the leather that they chose is beautiful. I like that. It's just... Uh, they, the back does seem to be a little bit just straight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pittsburgh man, I don't think the third row reclines. Um, I don't see a way to do it. If anyone would know, it'd be Moran. <laughs> um, but yeah, it doesn't seem like it. I mean, it reclines forward, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
Huh. Uh, these seats do recline though. You can just pull these and go nice and comfy back. Break the knees of the person behind you. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> uh, you've got two HDMI ports, two USB-Cs, some Oops. cup holders, <clears throat> rear zone climate control for both, both second and third row. And then uh, these big old screens. Oh yeah, giant screen. I'll take that, swappy actually. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Did somebody just say hello? Yes, Andre Motors. Hey. hey. So these screens are large. Probably one of the largest rear screens I've seen and you can angle them too. It's kind of nice if you got a shoddy in the back, <laughs> they can see. If you got a tolly in the back, they can see. I don't think it works with tolly. Hmm. <laughs> you, can, you can watch things. HDMI, you can actually cast your device as well with Miracast, it's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Listen to stuff and then do navigation. That brings up the Cadillac navigation screen eventually. <laughs> uh, you could put in somewhere, I want food. Daddy, I'm hungry. I want to eat pizza. That's cute. Uh, I want Little Caesars. Go, Dad, go. And then up there it says address received from rear seat, Little Caesars, and you can accept or ignore it. I think that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then dad goes, no, we're not getting Little Caesars, we're getting Hungry Howie's. And he goes, okay, there you go. And then you can send that one. It is actually neat. This uses like like the uh, Yelp reviews and shows their hours oh, wow. and their phone number. What happens if you press phone number, will it call it on the... No, no, it doesn't. It just shows it. But you could at least, someone could read read the number yeah. off and, and call it or something. That could be very dangerous if you have little kids back here with very long arms. They could just, I mean, not very dangerous, but it could just be. Right. Yeah. I, I, I do want to say two things though. One, let's look at this screen. I know. What is going on with this? It's supposed to be like. Like the, decor, the, like a, like a, like a. Screensaver kind of. Yeah, it's like the background. You guys can even see on the camera here. It looks like fingerprints on the camera. Yeah. That's like the design. That's how it's supposed to look. This uh, front screen, See? yeah, mm -hmm. the front screen has something similar and okay. I thought it was just dust on the screen, huh. but it's supposed to be like a star design kind of. Yeah, they're like light. super vague and it looks kind of cool on this screen, fine enough, but yeah, when I was trying to actually <laughs> just look, it looks like just it's dirty. Black. Yeah. Just make it black. And the other thing I want to say, this is cool and all, but people are just going to use their phones. I mean, honestly, like if, if you were sitting back here, we're going somewhere and I was like, uh, you know, hey, Liz, can you look up a pizza place? You'd be zoop, doop, 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 Google Maps done on your phone. But the, the, the navigation, the navigation part is nice. Don't, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess I could see it being used. The point of it is just to be able to send it to the driver. Yeah. So the driver true. doesn't have to do all those things. I've been in a uh, couple road trips with my family and stuff and they're like, where do you want to go? We need to find this hotel. Can you do it for me? I'm driving. I right. can't do it right now. Thank you, Belladia J, for the donation. Yes, thank we you. appreciate that. We we'll do. give you a little horn honk when we get up to the front there. Because mm -hmm. I actually haven't tried the horn yet in this car. I don't typically use horns. No, you yeah. don't. I'm the one that's always like, you should have honked your horn. Honk your horn. Flip them off. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> he's he's just understandable. Um, yeah, other than that, this certainly lacks the, the usability of the Pacifica screen where you can play games with the other people. Right. Uh, what, what can you do in settings? Video voiceover, screen brightness, remember screen power status, a few things. Interesting. Nice and responsive at least, so that's good. Yeah, that is super nice. And you've got Cadillac headphones. With the Look at those. Cadillac logo on it. Yeah, and you even adjust your volume by rotating that knob. Pretty cool. Dial, I guess, is the proper word. Ah. Uh. Yes. Maybe I should do a sound test on these. Oh, that'd be so fun. It, yeah. yeah. Maybe I could put these right up to the binaural microphones. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Next level stuff, man. That's what you're getting from Daily Motor in 2021. Yeah. <laughs> so Forge Fantasy asks, uh -huh. uh, what makes this more expensive than other three row SUVs? And it would be... I'll answer it. Right there. That badge. <laughs> the badge is what does it. Well, brand. I mean, they've got a lot of engineering. This thing is, we'll talk about when we get on the road. It drives pretty well, especially for what it is. It drives much better than the previous Escalade. Um, and the, the the infotainment is actually really good. The infotainment, the gauge cluster, we'll go over a that. Lot of, a That's, lot of things with that. The whole value of this car is right around that area right there, the driver's seat. 
Um, and I appreciate having the 6.2, even though that doesn't cost them anything to build these days. So, uh, yeah, other than that, I'm, it's hard for me to see the value proposition. That's fair. Yeah. Although we, we are paying over $100,000 for headphones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, and, and to, that was a good comment, by the way. <laughs> to Cadillac's credit, they need, like, this is a money printer car for them. They pretty much take a $60,000 Tahoe and turn it into a $110,000 Escalade with some nice things. Don't get me wrong. It's not like they don't make it different, mm -hmm. but it, the core vehicle is the same. So they probably make like 20 or 30 grand on each one of these they sell. Wow. Which is a lot for cars. Because like a cheap car, they might only make like $800. So wow. profit margins are tight. And those little ones, these big things, tons of money. Wow. Yep, that's why everyone's doing large SUVs. They can print money with them. Huh, so, cool. Yeah, people, humans see bigger as more expensive. Like, they just expect to pay more for a bigger vehicle. That doesn't mean it necessarily costs that much more for the manufacturer to make it bigger. Oh. Yeah, some psychology there. Okay, to the front? Yes. Cool. Also, we got to do the rear, uh, the, the air suspension tests with you. Pressing oh, the button. yeah. Should we do that before we go to the front? Yeah. Okay. So, for any of you just tuning in, we are checking out the Escalade, and here's my chance to complain about the number on the back. You see this 600, you might think that's a, that's a trim or something. No, no. What that means is that this Escalade, with its 420 horsepower, 6.2 liter V8, makes 600 newton meters of torque. That, that means nothing to anyone that doesn't know at least you got to know torque figures, and then you got to be able to convert it from newton meters over to foot pounds. So it's metric torque figure. And the only, someone tried to argue that when electric vehicles come around, that number is going to be a lot more important. Yes, it is, but it's also just really confusing at this point. It, it means so little, especially because they pointed out when Cadillac comes out with a diesel version of this truck, it's also probably going to have 600 newton meters of torque. So the, the, the badge isn't going to make any difference between the two engines. <laughs> Silly. Anyway, let's, Wait. I'm going to raise the suspension. Press this button two times. That gives us increased ground clearance. Boy, Nathan would have so much fun with this car. Maybe you have to have the key. Try it now. You're supposed to be able to open the trunk by just putting your foot here. Am I not putting it? Maybe it's because it's raising right now? It might be. I can see the light. I can see the light. Don't go to the light, Alyssa. <laughs> Let me try. Hey, there we go. Just Why did you time. get to do it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's gonna be on, on my toes. I should be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. Okay, it passes the test. That's fine. Yeah. No big deal. So for those of you who tuned in a little late and did not see this thing in full lifted mode, looks a little silly. An increased ground clearance. I think it looks better when it's down a little lower, but it is fun to drive around like this. So let's hop in front. And we'll do a little driving around and then we'll talk about all the gauge cluster and all those fun things. You have the power fold down running boards. Those are helpful. Yeah, they are actually. I really need those. Yeah. And they're nice and wide too and they go up when you have the door shut. I think it's entirely necessary. <laughs> all right. Has anyone said anything about stream quality? No. Okay. No, no. Because it still says we're low on stream health, but maybe that's just the GoPro app being silly. Potentially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's hoping. Moran has um he's commented that the third row seats do not recline. Yeah, there you go. Automatic shutdown in three minutes and counting. Mm. Okay, so as you can see here, we will go over the gauge cluster and everything around here more after a little bit of driving, but it's a nice integration. It looks good. Nice place to be. Good job, Cadillac. Mm. And the trunk key does have to be in your pocket in order for it to work. That makes sense. Yeah. Probably just have to be pretty close. Yeah. And probably can't be raising up. Fair. I don't appreciate this shifter, Cadillac <laughs> and Chevy. You've been using this shifter for a little while. A little Jackrabbit shifter. Um, it, uh, I just don't think it looks very good. It doesn't feel very classy. What's up? Quality is terrible. Okay. Well, let's, um, we're going to stop out real quick and... I guess we'll just try disconnecting and reconnecting and bringing it back up and seeing if it works better. So yeah. stand by. Stream quality is like a Toyota reverse camera. Okay, but not great. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, we are back and it should be 
100 now. <laughs> Should be very crisp and crystal clear. It's kind of a shame we did have to stream like that. Maybe a quarter, because right. it was just after it dropped out there. Right, but that was with uh, the Cadillac's 4G LTE. Right, but it wasn't the it wasn't the 4G's fault. It was just it's something weird happened when it dropped out. Maybe it switched over to the phone. I don't know. Either way, we're back. We're here. It should be Much better. Good, 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 good. Should be clear. So for some reason, my lift gate glass is open. I thought we shut that, but I thought gonna... I noticed that. Really? Yeah. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. We'll read some. Actually, Charlie's gonna be the only one that's interested in the comments, so or we can help the like, answer them. Cool. Anyway, I was saying I don't care for the shifter. It feels cheap. The Navigator had a much nicer, like, beautiful looking push button setup. Worked much better. I do really appreciate this climate control setup though. Look how look how classy That's that pretty. looks. It's probably not even coming up. It's uh, for, for you techie type people, it looks like it's even running at a higher frame rate than the GoPro. So maybe like a, like a 90 hertz refresh rate. It looks very crisp, easy to use. I'm glad they didn't bury it somewhere in the infotainment. Mm -hmm. Throw this into drive, and off we go. Ooh, Initial fun. impressions, I was impressed on how easy this thing is to drive. Fun. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it drives easier than the Navigator even. Um, they did a good job with that. Cool. Uh, Abraham wants to know if you can show the knee pad on the driver's side where the driver's knee will rest on the center console. Is it soft? See, I love how specific you guys get in these live drives. It's cool because I would, it's just things I wouldn't ever think to mention. Right. Um, it is pretty soft. I'll let Alyssa show hers too because it's the same on each side. But it's it's leather, but it's not padded. So okay. yeah. Um, if your knee rests on there, it's 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 not. And you run over a bump, it would hurt. I would think. Well, it's not gonna like hurt hurt because there's that soft initial bit because of the leather, but it's not gonna it, like go in at all. Right. It'd be cushioned by any padding. <laughs> we do have a pocket here that will fit a 32 ounce water bottle on its side. So if you're okay with hearing water sloshing around, it will fit there. Uh, what was else was I going to say? Um, oh, these handles feel remarkably cheap. And I'm not one to complain about uh, oh, yeah. complain about materials, so that's not what's happening here. I'm just saying compared to other luxury vehicles, I think even the, the Navigator that had like really nice leather wrapped things. I mean, this car is 112 grand and this is just hard plastic. It's not even like a nice leather wrap. So oh, what no, a, like, no, stop, dude. disappointing. <laughs> Man, this thing redlines at 5,700 RPM. It's interesting. Ah, oh, it does have ambient lighting. Yes, it does have ambient lighting. Uh, we haven't really seen it much, even in this kind of darker overcast day, it's not popping out. Right. But I will be doing a night drive on this car after this live drive, so we'll get to see it there. Check the Winding Road channel for that one. Yep. And it has a lot of colors to choose from as well as a customizable color wheel. Actually, I take that, I oh. take it back. I don't think it, it was customizable. We'll oh, check really? it out next time we're stopped. But I think it was um, like a, just a demo mode. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. I forgot to brush my teeth. Ew. Sounds decent. It uh, it pulls hard, but if Cadillac still doesn't make a V version of this car or whatever it's going to be now, whether it's V or Blackwing or whatnot, if they don't make an Escalade V, they're just they're leaving money on the table. I don't understand why they don't put a supercharged version of the 6.2 in this car. So hopefully they do that because that would be awesome. You hear a lot of exhaust rush too, which is interesting. You hear that when I like it's coming from back behind you, sorta. Like yeah, a, I do oh, hear that. whooshing sound. Yep. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, many comments. Okay. Uh, what is the best second row SUV under 50K? <laughs> Mr. Uh, Carman? Tell you right. Kia Tell you right. Cool. All right. Sound unless, unless he means that person only means like two row, not having a third row, in which case. Oh, man. Under 50K? I'd have to do a little bit of research. I'm just like scrolling through my head real quick to think of what's under 50 grand. The, technically the GV80 starts at like 49, I think. 
Mm-hmm. So that's pretty good. That's so in nice. other words, it's kind of d- difficult to find a really good two-row SUV under 50? Not necessarily. I just haven't driven many. Most of the cars we drive are expensive. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. We usually get... The Ford Edge is pretty decent, honestly. So that one's okay. Yeah. Is the uh, Mazda CX-30 considered a SUV? Or is that just a compact? I mean, it is technically considered an SUV. That one's pretty good. And I like everything from Volvo. The Volvo XC60. Let's go with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Although uh, well, that might be over 60. Wow, okay, so the guy that asked for uh, the knee yes. pad thing. Is he what, like seven foot three? <laughs> no, his name is Adam. And he says um, he's comparing it with the Genesis that has a padded knee rest. Oh, yeah. No, don't even, if, I don't know if how many people watched my recent Genesis GV80 review. I didn't tear it apart, but I was a little harsh on it. I think the car is a little overhyped. However, this, the, the GV80 is nicer from an interior quality standpoint than this car. Just just buttons, switches, materials. The leather in this is really good, but uh, the GV80 has a little more attention to detail. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well. Not too bad. No, not too bad. Actually, the ride's actually quite good. It's really very nice. Yeah. How- what do you think of the uh, oh, sound isolation? Pretty good. Um, we haven't taken it on the highway. That's the ultimate test. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, it certainly rides like a big body on frame SUV. I think the Navigator rides a little better. Mm-hmm. I um, do remember that being really smooth, and we were towing a race car with that as well. Yeah, so. which in some ways helped smooth this. But even when um, it was unladen, it was pretty darn good. Um... This is good, but it's it's like it's definitely no Lexus or Mercedes right. or anything like that. Right. The X5 is much better than this. Okay. And the X7 is too. Um, okay, so you just got this vehicle today. Yes. Yep. So sound system test will be coming up soon. Yeah, I think I have it scheduled for like this Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, and there are 36 speakers. A whopping 36 speakers Mm -hmm. in this car. There's one right there. Mm -hmm. There's that one right there. (laughs) There's matching on this side. There's a ton in the front uh, center just dash. This dash right here, if you can see these little dots right right here, how it's a lot right there, not a lot right there, and then a bunch. That's a giant speaker, (laughs) which is insane. Yeah. There are some on the headrest. Oh yeah. And Charlie has them as well. So, a ton of them. Also, I should mention, feel free to donate. If, <laughs> if we get up to $10 total donation, uh, we will do a burnout. Oh we'll boy. figure out how to turn the, the uh, stability control off and we'll, we'll do a burnout <laughs> with this. If we can, I mean, it's it does have a two-wheel drive mode, so in theory it should do it. Jeez. And if we hit twenty dollars in donations, we'll have Alyssa drive. She yeah. drove the Navigator, and it, you remember uh, when you drove it? I don't know if you ended up driving it on camera. Yeah, but I, yeah, no, it was I, on camera. I think it might have been a live, live drive or. Uh... It, I know we tried to do it on a live drive. I couldn't remember if we just didn't hit the donation threshold and you drove it afterward. Oh. Uh, either way, you remembered that car being actually fairly easy to it drive. It was so right? easy to drive. It was such a giant machine. Mm-hmm. I'm a smaller person. I was expecting it to be like, I, I don't know, driving like a far, like a like a Tractor. giant for, farm truck from the early '90s. Mm-hmm. It was obviously it wouldn't be like that. It's a luxury vehicle from 2020. It's, right. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. Mm-hmm. But that's what I expected it to be, and it was such a nice surprise. So yeah, this one should be fun. Yeah, if we hit twenty dollars total donations, hit that up. And if you donate via Cash App. That will double your donation <laughs> on that one because um, don't have any YouTube tax. Well, that's our first donation from Nathan. He says, "Burn it." <laughs> Did he donate? Yeah, <laughs> the whole shebang. Okay. Ten, ten bucks right there. All right. Well, we will uh, we'll find ourselves a lot and see if we can light these things up. That makes me nervous. It should, yeah, it should be it should fine. Should be fine. Yeah. Um. Let's let me catch up on some of these comments. We need to set Nathan up with a Cash App link. And if you guys don't have Cash App, check the link in, I think it's
think it's in our video description. It might actually not be. It's in all our other video descriptions uh, for our donation link. It'll give us an extra like five or ten dollars and give you an extra five or ten dollars as well. Okay. Transmission's pretty good. Chevy does a great job. Well, it's not Chevy, it's GM. GM does a great job with their transmissions. So, okay, mm -hmm. question. Yep. You said before that you really do like trucks, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What guy doesn't like like, a, like to drive a truck? Does this give you that same truck feeling? A little bit, <laughs> a little bit. I, uh, when I when I was driving home this morning with it, um, we, uh, I, had, I had music playing, I was sitting up and everything. Yeah, you, you had your rat playing. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it doesn't feel the same as like a pickup truck. There's, it's, it does something about the luxuriousness. The hood sort of sits up in a different way than it does in a truck. I'm sitting more cocooned than I would be yeah, in a, in a that standard makes a lot truck. Of sense. And then looking behind you, you don't have the glass real close by. So it's not quite the same, but it's similar. You feel, you feel cool <laughs> driving around, especially with the, the suspension lifted up, but it's not the same. Nice. All right, so we're going to come to a stop right here. We got our. Uh, Are we doing a launch control? Well, I'm gonna. I, I I have not turned traction control or anything off in this car, so we're just gonna experiment here. We're gonna hit the mode button. We're in sport, and then where is our traction control? I know that you can go vehicle information. All the way up. Okay. Traction off, stability off. Wow, that's easy. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's just see what happens. And then if it's cool, we'll have Alyssa go outside and film it from outside. Okay, so what is it that we're doing? Burnout. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> that works so well. It totally lit them up. <laughs> There's smoke behind us. All right. That's awesome. I'll go outside. <laughs> it's so easy. That's cool. But uh, you could even feel the car kind of move a little bit. <laughs> That's perfect. All right, we'll do it a little bit on this wet pavement here so it's a little easier on the tires. Wow. Well, I need to take that with me. Uh, nope, because we're using the car hotspot. It's strong enough. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. Uh, there's, a, there's a van coming, so we'll let him go by. All right, in the meantime. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. That's pretty cool. Do you consider the Caddy to be an old person luxury brand? Not really. I think Cadillac's done a good job at sort of renovating themselves. But on the flip side, I do think they've kind of abandoned mm. their old people demographic. So. Well, yeah, with all the tech that they have in this thing. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. It would be really difficult to learn all that stuff, even if you are tech savvy. So um, I will, I'll spin it, I'll launch it, and then I'll come back and grab you. Okay, cool. So if you want to stand right. behind. Should I take comments or leave them? I got them. Okay. Actually, where is the best for me to stand? Probably behind and a little bit to the angle. Okay, cool. Get three quarter shot. Got it. some cops to show up now. Man, look at this. Oh boy. That was so loud, guys. <laughs> I'm surprised there's any tire left. We definitely, uh, maybe we didn't. We might have lost the stream there for a minute when we were driving away, but. Oh. Isn't that cool? That was super cool. It was so loud. Oh, I bet. So loud. Yeah, we should flee the scene. <laughs> we should. Smell it too. Oh, it's stinky. <laughs> That's cool. That was really neat. Nice. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> yeah. And if we get, uh... oh wow, there's so much rubber back there. Yeah, yeah. I zoomed in <laughs> on it. There's so much rubber. Nice. Nathan's probably letting us know that it disconnected. Uh, keep an eye on that and see if, sure. see if there's any downtime. Okay. Um. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, all right, we got to comment. We catch up on these comments. Yeah, yeah, So, augmented reality dash cluster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll it definitely... has that. Yep, we'll do that. And you can access that when the nav is on. Yes. Well, you can access it at any point. It doesn't really do any augmented reality stuff until you're driving. Got it. So, we'll go down this way and play around with that. 
also the paddle shifters. Oh yeah, let's play with those real quick. They so, should work on L mode. Okay, is that what they said? Yeah, because in, in dry mode they're not working, so let's go to L. Okay, yep, they are working now. So he wants to know if we go into L1, let's explore it. There you go, Moran. We're on foot to the floor. Jeez. I've never heard just a naturally aspirated V8 make that much exhaust motion before. Usually that's like a turbocharged thing. Weird. Which is silly because of that 600 on the back. <laughs> okay. L mode. Well, that's kind of cool that you can't accidentally tap the paddles in D. <laughs> I wonder if there's piped in sound, because it, I mean. It kind of sounds like it. Right, you shouldn't yeah. have to in, right. a, in a car like this, but it does it's sound a, a little bit. But yeah, they yeah. do that sometimes. Um, how good is the head-up display, and how is the road noise compared to that Lincoln Navigator that we had? Head-up oh, display is pretty good. Uh, Chevy's been doing head-up displays for decades. They, oh, <laughs> boy, dog, what are you doing? Wow, there's a dog in our car. Ha, because I said dog. I dropped the phone. I can't reach it. <laughs> Idiot. Uh, okay. Anyway, what were we talking about? Um, Navigator head-up display. Oh yeah, no, the, the head-up display is fine. It's not as um, advanced, at least currently. I might be able to reconfigure it, but it doesn't look as advanced as the Navigator, but it's crisp, it's fine, it works. Okay. Um, and then he said, what else did he say? Road noise. Oh yeah, the Navigator seems a little bit better, but we haven't taken this on the highway yet and we'll do that right. after this. Porch well. Fantasy says he would donate, but he just bought one of these. No way! Congratulations, <laughs> Porch Fantasy. Yeah. Let us know if there's anything that you particularly appreciate or don't like, or uh, that we should let everyone else know. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or it's experience for ourselves. Right. Yeah. Maybe uh, Forge Fantasy should go out and do some burnouts as well. Yeah, he should. <laughs> Although he's the one paying for the tires, so or she <laughs> shouldn't discriminate. Um, do you want else? this? I was just saying there's more. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a lot more. All right, and you, go, go, you can go through. I'll yeah. start showing, I'll kind of show people around here and you can okay. do more comments. Cool. All right, uh, interrupt me anytime you want to talk about something. Okay. Um, how do you feel about the 6.2 liter in this compared to the upcoming diesel inline six? Well, I do know that Chevy's been doing a great job with inline sixes in their other trucks. Uh, so, It'll probably be a pretty good motor, but I'd still, I mean, if I'm getting an Escalade, I want to have like fast, I want to have V8, like I want to have loud, kind of ostentatious. That's why I want a supercharged V8. If I, if I could afford one of these, I'd get like kind of the stripper model, basic stuff, and then I would have somebody throw a supercharger on it. Cool. If Chevy won't do it, I'll pay, or if, sorry, Cadillac won't do it, I'll pay somebody else to do it. Nice. Okay, where would you rank this overall between the Navigator? Okay. The X7, okay. the GLS, mm -hmm. and the LX. Well, LX is last. I can start with that. I haven't driven, I mean, I have, I've only had this for not even 12 hours, so <laughs> I can't give a definitive answer right now. It still smells like uh, it, you rubber. Can smell it. <laughs> um, I smell food too, though. Yeah, I was thinking that too, like airport food. Yeah. Um, I put X7 top, um, what do you say, GLS? GLS. Yeah. Third. The other one's X7 and the Navigator. Uh, no, X7 top, Range Rover second, GLS, Navigator, this, and then the last one, whatever, the LX. Yeah. Yeah. That would be my order off the top of my head. Got it. Yeah. All These right. lights aren't particularly bright. I mean, like. No, they... but they're, they're not blinding, which is nice. I guess. <laughs> what does this button do? We've got Marty Dunn. Oh, it turns the Wi Cool. And he says, burnout out proves the 600 badge means something. <laughs> yeah, it means something. It's just like... Or is worth. He uses the word worth. Ah, uh, worth something. That's yeah. fair. Cool. Cool. Uh, Jeremiah says, thanks for the live review. Keep up the great work. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. So... Sweet drivers out today. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was with the, uh, the lady. <laughs> okay. She, like, put her hand up and was like, sorry. She Somehow you don't see this car. Which is nutty. <laughs> this thing is giant. Well, considering how gray the the sky is. And yeah, how, I guess it could blend yeah. in with the snow a little bit since oh, it's yeah, white. Yeah. But it'd be one thing if she didn't see us in like the Corvette. 
She had a dog in her car. She had another person. Distractions. You know, yeah. Look at happens. you being so uh, consolidatory. Many, many screens yes, in the Cadillac. Insane. Big screens. I'll start on the left here. This is actually kind of nifty. This is a little screen. You can change your trip. You can go over and apparently just get a black screen. Two different trip settings. You can hold them to reset. You can go here and change what you want for your gauge cluster. So you can either have this map. You can have standard kind of gauge, if you will. You can have the AR camera, which we will demo a little bit more in a second, but it is a straight up camera of what is in front of us. This is like cameraception. We've got camera on camera shooting camera shooting reality. <laughs> it's all simulation. Elon Musk was right. <laughs> and then you have night vision mode, which apparently it's not dark enough to do, but uh, you get a night vision camera, which is kind of nifty. I guess if you're going down a dark road and you want to make sure you see like kids or deer or something like that. So we'll do the AR camera in a minute once we go out driving again. You can adjust your head up display, super easy right there. What else? This infotainment seems to work quite well. Cadillac's come a long way from the mid 2000s Cadillac Q system. You can either touch it, it's very responsive, almost Tesla-esque yeah, in terms nice. of response time at least. But then you also have the center rotary knob that works quite well. It transforms the screen into this roundabout deal. So it, That's fun. I like as that you stuff. scroll, it goes around, around, around. But then when you touch it, it goes back to this kind of flat touch setup. Um, yeah, I see what you mean right here though about this yeah, looks yeah. like dust. Well, what I think it might actually be is, uh, or what it reminds me of is mm -hmm. when you're um, landing at night in an airplane and you're coming into <laughs> oh, the city. Oh yeah, you're right. And you see looks the like that. I don't right. know if that's what it was intended to be or look like, but that's what it reminds me of. That's true. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, what else? Um, Adjust the clock by tapping that. So. Did you go over the camera? I did not. Camera looks quite good, I believe. Is there a button for that? No, you just gotta go here. No, nope. or here. Camera. Whole, it's pretty much standard fare for luxury vehicles. Battery's actually getting kind of low. So okay. To avoid that. We can swap batteries if need be, but. Gotta stop again. Yeah. Stop again. yeah. Uh, da -da -da. So you got your standard normal view, kind of a wide overhead, looking down, side to side. You've got your 360 over there at all times. Then you can see the back. You can do this 360 view, so it kind of superimposes a properly black Escalade right there. So if I were to drive forward. Properly black. Uh, oh, I was gonna say it doesn't rotate the tires, but it just rotates them like very delayed. <laughs> I should be holding this closer. It's, oh, go back. And see it moving like that. It's almost like you're driving in a video game. Mm, from the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah. So I can put it into this parking spot. Man, technology's wild. It'd be wild. It do be wild. A um, few other buttons down here. What else do you guys want to see in terms of infotainment? I mean, it's got a lot of, some unique things, some less than unique things. Here's ambient lighting. Uh, you can connect it to the drive mode right here, or you can have it in demo mode or you can choose any of these colors. I still don't understand why you can't choose any color in the rainbow. Mercedes is like the only brand that does that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different colors. Hm. I guess I'll stick it on blue for now so maybe we can see it when it starts to come on. Uh, you looking at the window sticker? I'm trying to find where it says horsepower. Oh, it's 420. Oh. They don't usually put that in Monroney's. Oh, I thought they did. No, yeah, some brands do. I think it's just BMW though. Ah, uh, yeah. maybe that's the one I was thinking of. Maybe it was. GTA San Andreas. <laughs> I do like having a wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I'm not going to turn it on right now, but we'll show it in the review. It's super easy to use along with the wireless charger that's right there. I like these stands, these wireless charger stands. They are kind of interesting because they all seem to have this little like like the, your phone is just hugged so much in there, which is good because it, it your phone doesn't fly around it, but it kind of makes it hard to take it out. Mm. Uh, but it's such a great, you know, you're saving so much space having that there uh, because otherwise you just have like a flat plane where your phone will sit on and because of convection and, and your house keys and stuff like that, the keys could get hot. Anything else you have in there could get hot. So yeah. it's not always, I don't know if they have like a safety measure against that. Right. That I just don't know about. But, I don't know. And also it just kind of uses so much space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of space, up under here you <laughs> yeah. have a center compartment that is refrigeratable. 
Looks like someone got some sort of water down in there. I think it's sticky. Gross. Yes. Also have USB-A, USB-C. I believe that's the only USB-A port in the vehicle. Wow. Ooh, that, I don't like how that just flops. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, could be better. I think it's fine. Overall, I'm a tad disappointed interior quality. I don't know. It's just when you when you cross the hundred thousand dollar mark, I mean, you need to be big time. So, whatever. They did go big time with their infotainment. System. Yes, all that stuff worked. The, the operational parts of this car are excellent. They work really well. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it. Uh, it's not bad. Everything feels really like the leather feels good. But some of the switch gear and stuff a little less less than inspiring. Let's do another uh, walk around outside. Yeah. Cool. For anyone who tuned in on a little on the later side. We got it here in the white and black Oreo version. I'm not a huge fan of the color scheme, but Alyssa likes it. So someone, someone cares for it. It's cool to see that bright white yeah. LED light on now. Yeah. Man, is it bright. Holy it's so cow. Bright. If you're driving a Miata coming up on this, you'd be Ooh. blinded. Huge grill. Huge wheels. It's all about being big, baby. You know what I don't care for? What? Th that antenna's off center. <laughs> What's it to you? <laughs> it's just not symmetrical. Oh well. It's I I feel like something like that. I'm not a car person. I'm But I'm, you're an aesthetic person, you're an art person. What do you yes. think? Do you think they could have slapped it in the middle and made it nice and symmetric? Symmetrical? As I do like symmetry. Yeah. But for something like that. Okay. It might have been a necessary thing to have it on that side because of all the infotainment. I think it probably okay, saved them about three cents per vehicle on wiring costs. <laughs> and that's American cheaping out on stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the police. Oh, <laughs> let's see if they come over here. Yeah, let's see if they uh, figure out where the ones that were laying uh -oh. rubber. They can't hear us. Okay. <laughs> they know we can't speed with this. So any last things you guys would like to see, we're gonna go out and drive it, we'll get it on the highway. But if there are anything that you'd like to know, I think this is one of the coolest things about it is being able to tap the badge to open it. Do you wanna try kicking it now? Yes, please. Okay, so yeah, show where the light is. That little light's kind of hard to even tell that it's a Cadillac emblem, but that's what it is. That indicates right where Alyssa needs to kick to open it. <laughs> Why, man? Why? Am try I... once. Oh, there you go. Okay. okay. It's, it's in theory supposed to just be kind of one swift motion. I guess I'm just not a Swift. Swift, yeah. <laughs> Let's just maybe try it again. Can you close it that way? Try it. Oh, probably not because your head's going to be... It's just like up down. Okay. Neat. Yeah, that's awesome. I like that a lot. I like it a lot. Are they real exhaust pipes? Mm, no. All right, let's get back and do some comments. Sure. Cool. Remember what the name of this interior was? Was it Black Auburn or something, or Dark Auburn? I think it's Dark Auburn. Auburn. Hmm. Turn on the camera, it just looks black because it's getting dark out. Yeah, let's see. It doesn't super matter. Dark Auburn with black accents. Okay. No. Get in there, please. Okay. So so while you're doing some comments, I'll get a navigation destination queued up so that we can try the augmented reality. Oh, cool. Okay. Do you think Lucid Air can compete with Tesla in the future? I've never even heard of Lucid Air. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, Tesla has such a huge advantage with their supercharger network. Uh, Lucid Air may, might be able to make a better car, but I think Tesla provides a better service and product. Gotcha. Someone will beat Tesla, but it'll take a while. They got a big head start. That's fair. Uh, Tesla Model X or this Cadillac? <sighs> They're so different. <laughs> I mean, Pittsburgh, come on. A Model X, but you, you, it's are... just a very different image what you're trying to yeah. like have. Right. Um, technically, they're both American though, so there's that. Mm -hmm. uh, I would pick a Model X. You really like Tesla, so to be fair. Uh, yeah, I really like Teslas from a non fanboy way. Right. Like, I. I it's not like I just like adore Elon Musk. I just, I like electric vehicles ah. and Tesla makes, if not the best electric vehicle, at least the best electric vehicle product. Right. Their supercharger network and everything. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. For the guy that just bought this. Oh yeah. Yes, Forge Fantasy. Will this be reliable? The ultimate question. 
Oh, someone else is asking him that? No, no, he's asking he's us He's asking this. us that. Yeah. I think so. I mean, it's pretty tried and true technology. You might have some screen weird out this but yeah, other than that, yeah. it should be fun i think with how advanced um our infotainment and our our gauge clusters are getting now mm -hmm. that's going to be the ultimate question with everybody that has so much technology in there how well are those going to be able to hold out in the years to come um are we going to get automatic updates that are going to be sent to our cars that are going to update with new technology are these things going to be able to upgrade even with new technology so right. that is a huge question that i have for all of the cars that we've been in in 2020 and 2020. Yeah, what are those going to look like in 15 yes, years? Yes, in 15 years, are they are all of those things that you bought the car for going to be completely obsolete and you've got to buy a new car in 15 years, but the engine is still fine, the transmission is still fine, you've got good brakes and yeah, that's the ultimate question, I think. Moran's going to be able to fix them all. <laughs> yes, our tech guy. So this is kind of funny. You know, I've been accidentally calling this thing a Chevy half this time yeah, because yeah. really, it really it is. And and if you want proof of that, <laughs> if you click dealerships right here, oh, what? It gives you a bunch of Chevy dealers. <laughs> I mean, well, yes, it's the second one. The second one's Cadillac, Cadillac but, but yeah. we got Mark Chevrolet Suburban Cadillac, Todd Wenzel GMC, Todd Wenzel Buick, Bill Crispin Chevrolet. Also, I think it's kind of funny. It's Crispin, comma Bill Chevrolet. <laughs> He probably didn't put his stuff in there, right? Anyway, since this thing's gonna break down, let's just, uh, we'll set um, Suburban Cadillac of Plymouth as our destination, mm -hmm. and we'll hit go. Mm -hmm. And then, put on my AC belt. you see here on the augmented reality, it should show us little turning icons. I love that so much. Actually, I'm gonna put the steering wheel even closer so I can get you guys even closer. <laughs> Driving along. You do have navigation directions in the head-up display, so that's good. Ooh, there it is! Oh wow! So they got little chevrons that uh, tell you that, lo that look like they're like they're right on the road. I'll try to do it when the steering wheel's not being turned. Um, Porsche Fantasy. Did I just spend hundred k on a Chevy? <laughs> Hate to break it to you, bud. <laughs> oh, um, look at that. I'm gonna get the camera right in there. That's awesome. Cool. So you see, there's a little arrow just telling me I need to continue on, but there's gonna be a turn here in 0.8 miles, and it's gonna put chevrons to show us what direction we need to go. First person GTA. Right Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> Did somebody say that? No, that's That's me. you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think someone said uh, GTA San Andreas a little bit ago. Ah. So, yeah. Ooh, the battery's down to 10%. We're going to have to do a quick battery swap in a second. Okay. Oh, now the battery's at 25. I guess it heard me talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love GoPro. Okay, so Mach-E in the future. That's Ford, right? Yeah. Yeah, and Ford's kind of difficult mm -hmm. with their, uh, Everything. their loans. Mm -hmm. So... Oh, no, well, they're fine. We just, oh, someone was asking us if we we're gonna get one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're getting one like in a month. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's news to me. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Okay, so we're coming up to this roundabout. The refresh rate is super good on it's that screen. It's super up there. nice. It's, it, it's, it's just like a camera. Yeah, it looks so crisp. Yeah. Um, and then, in theory, I should get a turning symbol. Is it not giving it to me for the. Oh, there, there it is. is. But it did it really late, honestly. So we're gonna disobey the GPS and go straight. I'm curious if it's gonna freak out what it's gonna tell us on the camera. Oh, it says, okay, it just reroutes us. That was a really fast recalculation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, it happened right away. Well, that'll give us an opportunity to go up, up on the highway. Yeah, Although that's that noise quality or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Compared to that navi uh, navigator as well. Yeah. So I'll bring the camera back up there when it's something uh, something worthwhile. Oh, it you can see right here. Arrows. I like that. It does want us to stay. So it's saying there's three lanes, and it wants us to stay in one of the right two lanes. Although it does have the direction wrong, but that's fine. Huh. That could be really confusing because this one's saying to go straight. Right. Yep. So right there, it's telling me stay on this path. That's kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. I do like that because there have been a couple times where I have to go and drive on highways that I have not driven on before and I don't know, do I need to stay in this lane? Do I need to get over? What do I need to do? So I really love seeing those different lanes, although that one wasn't correct, so. <laughs> 
Um, so if you guys, uh, if anyone else wants to donate, if we get another $10, maybe we'll do another burnout and we'll also have Alyssa try driving. But we're not gonna stay on too much. It's not 522, no. Oh, that's when we're supposed to get there. 522. <laughs> it is already five o'clock, starting to get a little dark. Yep. But we'll hang out a little bit longer. This is a bigger vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to do a live drive on a large vehicle with a lot to talk about. Oh yeah. Getting up to the highway. This is technically rush hour, I suppose. Pandemic rush hour. Let's break out this enthusiasm. Yeah. Man, you sit so high. You really do. I guess we can test out the adaptive cruise, too. Yeah. Oh, someone did ask. I forgot to. Does it have lane keep assist? Uh, does it? It doesn't? Uh, I think it does. Let me see here. It doesn't have Super Cruise, which is super dumb. And if it does, I don't know how to set it up because Cadillac Super Cruise is the most confusing system on the face of the earth. Um, I, it does have an active lane keep assist, you can see right now. Okay. Wait, this isn't even set. My... Oh, is my traction control still off? It is. <laughs> oh, you need to have that on for your lane keep assist? You need to have it on for cruise control. Oh! All right, sorry about that. Third camera disconnect tonight. That was just because of GoPro battery dying, but right. now we're back in business. And it was weird. It went from like 10% to 20% and then died. So well, now we're at 100%, so. Good, we can live drive all night. <laughs> Until that battery dies and then yes. we gotta connect it again. Hey, you at least gotta give me some credit for bringing extra batteries this time. Heck yeah. Not like the Defender where we uh, died out. Ran out of battery and left everybody on a cliffhanger. Yes. That was awesome. So we're gonna turn our traction control back on and then do a little go back the other direction y, and then we will be able to test the adaptive cruise control. Hmm. Yes? Just observing. Ah, I see. Okay, K5 GT or Sonata N line. Sonata. I was I didn't care for the K5. Gotcha. Was that that little um the Kia we had last the Optima? Kia sedan? Yep. New name up for the Optima? Yep. Yeah, the Sonata N line wasn't like it didn't wow me, but it was it was pretty good. And I like the Sonata in general. That's gotcha. a car better. So cool. Alright, we're gonna take this on ramp to sport mode. Oh because this is a race car. Obviously. Careful there's a person on the side of the road there. I see him. I got my augmented reality room. <laughs> oh, that was interesting. It actually popped up on the dash to tell me there was a pedestrian. That's pretty cool. And it vibrated my butt. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's got butt vibrators. I'm really glad for these handles. 45, 47. You could really feel it. It feels so good. 50 miles per hour. Ah. Gosh, that's nerve wracking. Yeah. Does not like that. No tire squeal, of course, because it's such a giant vehicle. Yeah, I didn't push it to that yeah. point. Feel like rolling us. Uh, let's drop it down a bit to entry. Oh wow, you can go to entry exit ground clearance mode while you're driving on the highway. Huh. Oh, it says the vehicle will lower as you come to a stop. Okay. Uh, All right, so now cruise control set. Uh, cruise braking on adaptive cruise set to 70, and does it have? It, it makes it look like there's a lane keeping. But, oh yeah, there is. So it turns turns uh, right down there, that green thing, uh -huh. and it turns yellow. And then it, uh, and it sort of corrected me, but sure no Super Cruise. I don't understand why Cadillac's not include, including Super Cruise in every car they make. It's, it's as good, if not better, of self-driving than Tesla's. But Tesla puts it in everything. And Cadillac wow. saves it for like, a particular package and particular models. It's it's just it blows Money my mind. Scheme, maybe a little bit, but I, also I just I don't know. I just I mean, just poor marketing. Gotcha. It's sad. Does it have eco mode? No. <laughs> no. No eco drive, mode. Drive modes are tour, sport, off road, tow and haul. That's it. Gotcha. Yeah. So it must be a gas guzzler then. Oh yeah, we've been averaging. 11.7. Wow. I mean, that has been with some takeoffs and burnouts yeah, yeah. and idling and stuff, but EPA is like 15, I think. Okay. Oh, this is weird. You can, this button, 
you can push it up when it's not supposed to, and it it's like oh, you hear that. I like, like that. Broken. I would I would play with that all the time. It's not what you're supposed to do. Though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, it works with that one too. Oh, but it's popping back into place. Huh. Uh, that's funny. I'm just breaking the car at this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was the uh, fuel economy in that Navigator? I feel like that's just the big... It was fine. Uh, I'll do a highway fuel economy test on this. We'll see how it compares. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. It's too hard to tell when you're driving like this. It's not, that's not fair. consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. Oh, Cryptomics says, so do these press cars get crushed up? Do you guys are done with them? No, you can buy them. Seriously, yeah. just go to you go to auction, go yeah. to sale. Uh, yeah, probably some, get a good deal on it too, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, some poor old sap doesn't know they're buying a car that's been thrashed. Thrashed, but not crashed. Crashed, not crashed. Right. Yep. 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 Okay. Uh, what vehicles are you excited for this spring? <laughs> We've got a Nissan GTR coming in a month. That's uh, awesome. That'll 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 be what I call the Alyssa scare. Oh, great. Um. On winter tires, no less. So that'll be interesting. Doing Hopefully, a long control we have dry snow. Yeah. Um. What else? Um. Mazda three turbo coming next week. That'll be good. The, the new Ford products. We're getting an F one fifty, a Mach E, and what's the third car that matters from them right now? Um. I'm drawing a blank. But we got some third. Oh, the Bronco Sport. Oh, how could you forget the Bronco? Because it's just the Sport. All it is is an <gasps> Escape that's square. I'm just teasing. It's a box Escape. Got it. Uh, seat comfort and rating on the heated and ventilated seats. Are there ventilated seats? Yep, right here. Uh, do they make noise? They're not super loud. Oh, they're they're blowing pretty quick, actually. Yeah. It's already cooling on me yeah. off, so. I had it on just for that second, and I could feel the air. Yeah. So, Heat I mean, this car is warmed up, though. Right. What's weird is that I'm paying 112 grand and don't have massaging seats. Or do I? What's happening? Oh. Uh, no, no massaging seats. You can adjust them all over the place. Oh, wait, no. Massage right there. Massaging. Roll me. Wait, where did it? It went away. Bastard. <laughs> oh, there's a button for massage on, on the side, I feel like now. Use seat controller to operate the seat. Oh, it's oh. not a touch screen. Ah, there we go. All right, need. He needs a need. I'm gonna have a wave. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. That feels nice. Good. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. Awesome. It beats the Seat navigator. Seat comfort. Uh, I don't know. We haven't really been sitting long enough to really tell. No. My butt's a little bit kind of firm on the bottom. You know, quick rant. <laughs> G GM made all their seats less comfortable with this new T1 redesign. Uh, if you sat in like a a GMC Denali Sierra from like 2017. Seats were great. You sit in the 2020 and they're like rocks. Mm. It feels similar in this. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, you can't individually adjust your thighs like you can in the Navigator. That's so. right. It's just a flat, you know, flat seat. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like I'm just like a Navigator fanboy. I'm not. I just thought the Navigator, for what it was, the price and everything's really good. What the Escalade blows the Navigator way in is the infotainment and technology. The Navigator is bland when it comes to that. But appearance mm -hmm. and general refinement, I think the Navigator is a little better. Oh, Moran says he got an update from the Mercedes dealer that his <laughs> GLS is going to arrive in less than a week. Wow. That's cool. Uh, Moran, do you have like, are you on Instagram or anything like that? Is there any way we can like see your 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 Mercedes or can, you know, are you just gonna have to give us like a detailed visual text description? He'll let us know if it holds uh, holds gear. Okay, Did I, <laughs> I must have not done that. Must have not been instituting the Moran test back then. Uh, um, killer, kill, killer BG Master says, um, <laughs> you guys have great names. Yeah. Can you suggest some kind of first car? Yeah, Honda Accord. Honda Accord, Ford Focus, Toyota Corolla, uh, Mazda, mm, Mazda Miata if you have access to like a second vehicle or public transport. Cool. Nice. What reasons are those? Reliability? Reliability, cost, and cost of ownership, and general fun factor. Cool. All mixed together. Uh, Moran suggests that the seats will get softer over time. 
Okay. Yeah. That's fair. That's quite, quite fair. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and it's 420 horsepower, 6.2 liter. Yeah. Okay. 460 pound feet of torque, I think. Got it. Oh yeah, so Kryptonic says, I watched the super video from the Winding Road magazine and they really thrashed that car. Does Toyo get upset? That was, that was, that was you, yeah. Does Toyo get upset at that or do they like it? It's a good question. They generally kind of just turn the other way uh, or look the other way, I guess. I mean, they're not gonna, like, as long as we don't crash and we're not like breaking a lot of laws. They haven't really said anything. I think they saw one video once Toyota did and they were like, can you just maybe drive like a little bit slower? And we were like, eh. <laughs> That's funny. I think I remember that phone call. Yeah. That's funny. Moran says he'll make a video on it. Oh, awesome. What's the, oh, well, I was going to ask what his YouTube channel is, but he's literally commenting. <laughs> I'm going to be this semi truck. Because we got a V8. <laughs> I said it earlier, but I love having a V8 over the 3.5 EcoBoost in the, in the Navi. Nice. Yeah. So, what does happen to the press cars after you get them back? Other fleets get them or other... Yeah, other outlets get them. Yeah. And then once they hit about 10,000 miles or so, they go up for, go to sale. Cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Where, where would you go if you wanted to buy a car that was exactly a press car? <sighs> Is there like an online place you could go to? No, every brand handles it differently. Some uh, will just send them to like a Copart style auction house. Uh, some offer them internally first and then they go out from there. So yeah, there's, it's different for every brand, unfortunately. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So let us know if there are any last things you want to see on the new Escalade. We're going to get wrapping it up here pretty shortly. Um, we'll do a quick little 0 to 60 and 60 to 0 in a second, but other than that, um, Liz and I are going to go home, get a little food, and then i got to go out and shoot the night drive on this. So. Yeah, show yeah. off that ambient lighting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if there are any last things you'd like to know or see, let us, let us know. Yeah. Ooh, Marty W asks, what is your personal audio setup at home slash on the go? I actually don't really have like a hi-fi audio setup at home. Um, I care more about car audio than I do home audio. Yeah. I don't know, at home we just have a bunch of like Google Homes and uh, a boom speaker. Yeah, and an Ultimate Ear speaker and, and headphones and stuff. Yeah. I've got the AirPods and you've got the Pros. Yep. Yeah, and that's what we use. All right, ready for a 60 to zero? Yes. Hold the phone on your way. Oh, <laughs> Really so it bucked forward pretty far, but it, it, sure it stopped really hard too. All right, launch control. And the seatbelts really hug you. That was a little less dramatic. Yeah. I was impressed by that break. Right, right. It was immediate. Yeah. Immediate. Grab. Huh. <laughs> nice. Neat. <laughs> I don't even think I was in sport mode. I was in tour. Wow. Well. Forge Fantasy that bought this. He yeah. says, does it get girls? Got one. <laughs> I was here before. <laughs> does it get girls? I love that question. Okay, cool. Kryptonic says, love these live reviews. Do you guys have a streamable donation link? We absolutely do. Yes. You can either donate through the, uh, the YouTube Super Chat function. Um, super chat or super that all their super sticker things or uh, check the link in any of our other videos I forgot to put it in the live drive but any of our other videos for or no our well the daily motor cash tag is in this video description uh, so you use the cash app and you can donate to us on there as well pay for some of this gas because holy cow we've already gone through like a quarter or not a quarter almost a quarter tank Jeez. yeah getting 12.3 miles to the gallon at this point though man, oh man. but thanks I'm glad you like the stream <laughs> Alyssa was there for the Chrysler, Pittsburgh man says. The Chrysler? The Pacifica, maybe? Perhaps. Yeah, what, what Chrysler are you talking about? There's, was, there's been a couple of them, right? Is it a Chrysler that I, like, surprised you and Nathan in when I slammed on them? There's only two Chryslers, a Pacifica and, and the, uh, and the uh, 300. We haven't had a 300. Ah. Yeah, 
the overall driving experience in this car is not as refined as the Navigator. I'm saying it now. It's been enough time. It's been an hour or so. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying the Navigator felt a tad more refined. Yeah. I can agree with that. The seat yeah. massager is better in this, though. Ooh. Yeah. Although it doesn't do my butt. That's a bit disappointing. <laughs> Dark enough yet for the night camera? We are. Night camera? Yeah, the night oh, mm -hmm. night vision! Wow, that looks intense. Yeah. So uh, if like a deer were to run out in front of us and it were actually dark outside, that would pick it up in like a bright white blob. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. We can see some of this ambient lighting coming through. This deep blue oh, that we have. Get right here. Then I'll turn it on to demo mode. Beautiful, nice pinstripe all the way through. Oh, that wasn't, that's kind of confusing. The ambient lighting controls are not in settings, they're in vehicle information. I think, is that where it was? I can't even remember. Or maybe it was just in the menu. It was Pacifica, the classic mom mover. Okay. It's cute, I love that. Aw, thank you, Pittsburgh man. Donating a night license. Hey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I do not like the sound of that horn. Wait, can you do it again? I mean, I guess it sounds... It sounds horny. <laughs> it sounds like a horn. <laughs> well, that's good, I guess. Horn-like. Horn-like. Does it handle, like, um, a, a GTRS? Boat? Yes. GT2RS? Uh, oh yeah, no, very similar to the GT2 RS. What is that? I don't even know. Sarcasm. What that is. It's like a ridiculously fast Porsche 911. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who asked that? Forged fancy. Okay. You would know what it would handle, like man. How long have you had your yours? Forged fancy. How long have you had yours? Couldn't be too long. Can't be. Yeah. And what did you have before this? That'd, that'd be an interesting. Answer. Yeah. Where'd you yeah. come from? I actually really like this rotary knob. It works really well. The screen's very responsive. It's pretty intuitive. I like rotary knobs. I like when screens are both, both have both rotary and touch. And this does a pretty good job at it. Although I can't flip and remember how to do the ambient lighting. <laughs> this is infuriating. <laughs> huh. Oil life, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's right here. It, wow. Hmm. Charles. Ordered it last week. Nice. Wow. Why can't I do demo mode? The demo mode feature is unavailable while driving. <laughs> so you're just gonna make me put myself in danger by cycling through the colors manually? <laughs> I think Charlie is getting hangry, guys. <laughs> I just have a small low tolerance for <laughs> Before he had a Jeep Rubicon. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yes. That's it, get girls. I still... Ooh, this is pretty now that it's starting to come up. It's, oh. it's one big swooping line right there across the dash. And then some classy stuff. So that, that, that looks good. I like that. That is nice. Still doesn't beat Mercedes, but it's good. I think it's... I, I kind of like the subtlety of it. I do too, but yeah. you can make the Mercedes subtle by just kind of turning it down. I just yeah. always have it on full blast for the novelty. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. When well, I'm wrong. Right. Ooh, we can open this back up, get a little extra lighting. Ooh, let's show the night vision camera now with all the cars going by. That's fun. Mm -hmm. I almost want a deer to jump out. You hate those. <laughs> Understandably so. Oh, Look absolutely. at my profession. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So we are going to wrap things up. Come back to a stop here in our old favorite lot. Nice. See you later, Forge Fantasy. Thanks for watching the, the stream. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool that you got this just last week and you get to watch us mm -hmm. drive it now. Yeah. I hope you enjoy yours. It's a good, it's a good truck. Yeah. Um. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Feel free to donate. Like I said, I uh, I intentionally turned 
off the uh, video ads for this one, like, so you don't have to skip through an ad when you click on the video. Yeah. Um, I did that, so it does drop our revenue down a little bit, but I, I feel like people want to be able to get right in the video. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks to all, thanks to the Pittsburgh man, and to Yas, and Nathan, and... Oh, um, yeah. Um, and, um, and, um, Bella Dia J, all you guys donating yeah. really helped us out. And, Consistent uh, don donators. Yeah. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when are you going to do the Charlie Mobile live drive? <laughs> Whenever we have two really boring press cars. <laughs> I don't know. What, do you, what are we going to talk about for an hour in a 2006 town and All of your memories. All of your. Well, maybe we don't want to hear those. <laughs> uh. Yeah, Nate, we'll do, I'll do it with Nathan. We can talk about us crashing it. And it didn't crash. It just slid down a hill. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Huh. Well, this will be an interesting one to review. It's going to be a tough sound system test just because, I there's mean. so much to include, probably. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about. And 36 speakers. I mean, people are going to be expecting this to be the best. I haven't listened to it a bunch. I've only listened to just obnoxious rap music. <laughs> and it sounds pretty good. But... The bass could be a little heavier. I was surprised the bass was a little Wow, heavier. really? Yeah. Huh. Um, well, probably you're probably comparing it a little bit to the bass in that Durango that you had. That was too much. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just comparing it to everything. Okay. And then fuel economy tests. That'll be coming. And full review. Full review would be tough, too. But we'll make it happen. It'll be a lot. Yeah. Two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Two hours. Two hour later. review. That's almost this is one and a half. <laughs> and this will be live as well. We'll, uh, I'm actually, I have this saved to the SD card, so I'm gonna re-upload it in good, high quality and uh, just pump it out unedited as a live drive. So this will be posted probably tomorrow as well. Cool. Cool, let's hop on out and take one last look. We'll leave the vehicle running because it's providing us our hot spot right now for the GoPro. Into Oh my gosh. Stupid GM beep. I don't like that beeping. I know, Always neither do I. Yeah, yeah, freaking out. Always does. Yeah. Interesting stuff. This will be one to think about. You know, yeah. some cars are easy to review. They just spell spell it out for you. I can tell I can tell you all about it within the first five minutes. This one's gonna take a little more effort. Yeah. But that's what we uh, you know. With the fun. headlights on now, mm -hmm. they weren't on earlier, it mm -hmm. looks quite sharp. Oh yeah, it I think it does really as well. Nice. The LEDs yeah. look good. They, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a sharp truck. Just a little mild, as you pointed out earlier, compared to like previous Escalades and stuff. Yeah. Any last comments? We are pretty much all set. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks, Liz, for coming along and helping out. Sorry that Nathan wasn't here on this one. We'll and, try to uh, get him on the next ones. Yeah, hopefully. Yep. And thank you all so much for watching. We're going to do a little uh, walk around and then end the stream during that because we never know when it's actually finished. There's always a delay in there. So thank you all for watching. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, Drive on.